I know that you had been in favor of the president taking on uh, the China with some of these issues. You come from Michigan, and it's been a big concern there where steel has been dumped. Uh, what do you think about what you're hearing about this potential plan right now? Well, I'm, I am concerned that the president is, is overly interested in planning the signing ceremony and less focused on the substance. I've met with Mr. Lighthizer several times in the last few weeks. And, and I'm sure he publicly doesn't indicate that there's any difference between the positions that he takes and what the president would like to do. It was pretty clear to me in listening to the president's rhetoric and having a much more serious conversation with Mr. Lighthizer uh, that he would be looking for, he, Mr. Lighthizer, would be looking for a, a, a deal that deals with these substantive and structural problems that we have in the Chinese economy in a far more robust way, dealing with state ownership in a more robust way dealing with the intellectual property issue that um, I'm not sure will be addressed in this issue or in this, this agreement, and strengthening the currency provisions. I asked Mr. Lighthizer in one of our hearings if the currency provisions were going to be as robust as those that he laid out before the committee as far back as 2010, uh, and it was pretty clear from his answer that they would not be. So hmm. I think the president's too anxious to sign a deal. Uh, his failure uh, in Hanoi, I think, does create a context where he's looking to put that signature on something, and I'm afraid that it'll fail to deal with the bigger structural problems that we face. Chris Christie, the former governor of New Jersey, was with us earlier <clears throat> this morning, and, and he brought up a point I hadn't really considered to this um, entire situation, just that China may be using North Korea as leverage in the trade talks. Um, you think it's important to go ahead and make sure China's on board with dealing with North Korea? Does that take... A, priority above some of the trade issues in your perspective or no? Well, obviously they're all important and I think dealing with the threat that North Korea presents is something that ought to be on the agenda anytime we talk to China who has significant influence over North Korea. I'm not sure how much of that was included. I think the president has not handled the North Korean situation the way he should. He thinks he can go in there and you know, with a box of chocolates and a pat on the back somehow win this tyrant over. It's just not going to happen that way. Putting pressure on them uh, through China, I think, would make some sense. But I, I think it would, be a, it would be a mistake, however, to miss the opportunity while the door is open to deal with the bigger structural problems that we have in dealing with China and not just look at either the momentary pressure that they might put on North Korea or even I'm, I'm more concerned about the fact that the president might be willing to take what looks like a short-term win to keep the economy hot to have a, a, you know, some transactional arrangement with China in exchange for not getting the structural changes that really are the underpinning of the problems between China and the U.S. and really the rest of the world. China is going to be putting forth tomorrow, I believe, at, at uh, one of its big political conventions, it's going to be putting forth some new rules that will replace the three joint venture rules there that are now in place. Those are the issues that force U.S. or other foreign entities to come in and have a local partner when they do these things. Uh, it would potentially open up a lot of those issues that you're talking about, which would deal with the forced technology transfer. It, it's not part of the trade talks per se and what I've heard, at least from the details coming from this, but maybe this is kind of a backdoor way of dealing with some of those things. Uh, well, maybe kind of the promise of a carrot down the road if we make progress on these things. I mean, it, it, the Chinese can be inscrutable and we may not get exactly the deal we want, but is there a way to maneuver to get some of the things you're talking about? Well, what I worry about with their action is that it could be more cosmetic than anything. Yeah. Uh, when, when they're arguing that it ought not be a condition of the agreement, and then at the same time arguing that the U.S. Not, ought not be able to snap back tariffs in response to, to their non-adherence to any of the promises that they make, it, it does beg the question as to whether or not they're serious about this. If they were serious about it and were willing to make permanent structural changes, then they wouldn't fear having snapback provisions uh, for these Although, tariffs. You know, the, the entire enforcement setup, the way it's been discussed, where we would have officials from the United States and China sitting on a part on a, a, a committee where you hear these things, and if we don't like the answer that we get, we can put the tariffs back on, and they can't retaliate. I mean, it just seems stupid to me because if we put the tariffs on them, they don't like it. They just retaliate anyway and say, "Forget the agreement." I mean, it, they, it seems like an unenforceable enforcement. They have a lot of tools that they've been willing to use over the years. And you know, I keep going back to currency because right now is the time to make a really strong deal on currency. While you know, our, current, our, our dollar is strong and theirs is not as strong, it's the time when they're not really manipulating their currency because they don't have to. 
this is the time to deal with a structural question like that in a more substantive way. So I do worry that they will willingly sign anything knowing that they have lots of ways right. to violate it. <clears throat>